What's going on everyone? This is Dustin Stelzer with another episode of Electrician U and today we're going to talk about bending PVC conduit. So uh, sometimes you're going to run into situations where you need to bend a 90 or you need to bend uh, a 45, some kind of offset um, with PVC conduit. And a lot of people wonder, how the hell do you even do that? Well, what I have is I have this Wagner 1500 watt uh, heat gun, which this is essentially just a blow dryer, but it's a super blow dryer. Um, so it puts a lot of heat on. There's a, a high, a low. There's five different levels of heat. Um, when you turn it off, it automatically, like it keeps going a little bit, but it blows cooler air, so it, it calms the thing down, or it cools the thing down as it's, cool, or as it's shutting off. Um, some people like to use torches. Uh, some people like to use blow dryers. Like there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do this, but essentially you just need to heat this thing with enough surface area to make a bend. Um, with half inch conduit, it's fairly simple to do. The larger conduit that you get, like this stuff, would require a hell of a lot of heat for a long time over a long surface area, so it's really difficult to bend this kind of stuff. If you're doing this big a pipe, you really just want to get it right the first time and make sure you don't have to come back and adjust anything at all. Um, if you hire you know, third party companies to come and do all your underground stuff, uh, it could just be a crapshoot whether or not they get it right. Uh, a lot of times they don't. So that's why I like to do my own underground, but that doesn't always happen. So with half inch, I mean, like, look how bendable this thing is. You could pretty much bend a 90 in it, you know, with your, with your brute strength. Um, but to get it to stay in position, you kind of have to have a little bit of care with it. So let me show you how I do uh, a 90. Oh, and again, uh, I would really prefer to use factory 90s. I mean, this is something that's like not ideal, but if you're in a such a situation where you have no other choice, you don't have these, you're an hour away from a supply house or whatever, you have to make this work. So this is how you do it. All right, it's a little bit cold out here, so I'm gonna put the heat a little bit higher. I mean, it's not quite max, but it's pretty high up. Um, the reason I like this uh, heat gun specifically is because I can just set it down like this. A lot of heat guns don't do that. They don't have this stand on the back. So you got to sit here and try to heat this thing and you only have one hand to work with. So I like this because I can actually just work with both hands. So when you're bending in 90, um, the first thing you want to make sure you don't do is you don't want to heat one spot for a really long time. And I'll show you here in a second why that is. You see how burnt that is? It actually starts bubbling up. This is so hot that you'll burn your uh, conduit. You also don't want to touch it because it'll melt it. Like just me touching it already put a, a gouge in the material. So uh, I'm going to cut that off. Now, uh, we're bending a 90, right? So what we gotta do is we have, to, we have to heat enough of this surface area up because the back side of that 90 is gonna stretch a lot and the inside of that 90 is gonna compress a lot. All this material is gonna move around to account for that 90. So I'm gonna probably do like six to eight inches of heating all the way around thoroughly before I even start trying to bend it. And you don't want to go too fast. Notice like I'm going really slow. I'm not like jerking this around. Um, you want to get slow, even heating. And I can already feel with this half inch, I mean, this is only schedule 40, so it's just not that much material, but this is hot to the touch already. Just for me doing this. Oh, I got a little close there. I was talking, bullshitting, not paying attention.
All right, so you can see right now, it's got a little give in it. That's me barely putting any pressure on it. So right now, this is the point that's the weakest. That means I've kind of overheated that area. So I'm gonna look for all the points that are still rigid and those are the ones that I'm gonna heat. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. Each time I find a new rigid area, I'm trying to bend it a little bit as I go so I can find those areas. Right here, I've got two soft spots and it's still kind of hard in the middle, so I need to make it all even. That's the whole thing. When you're doing a 90, you want to go a little bit further than you think you need to, and you want to just keep checking and keep bending and figuring out where your uh, hard spots are and just keep softening them. And don't let it start getting cool on you because then it'll start forming into place and you don't want to do that until the very, very end. Now, as you get the middle, the middle's the easiest part. I mean, that whole thing is pliable right now. I don't even know if pliable is the right term. Is that the right term, Colton? Pliable? No Bendable? Flexible? Malleable? Mal no, I think that's stretchy. Like, if you can stretch it out into a thin strip. I could be way wrong. Emily's gonna kill me for not knowing that. I'm All right. right. <laughs> New bits for the win! <laughs> Colton and I have this thing at work where we always try to one-up each other and like whoever can be the most like biggest smart ass. I win. <laughs> some days, some days you do. All right, so notice I'm just kind of sticking to one area here because, is because I can feel where this is catching, where it's not allowing it to bend and it's right here. Um, I have another place right up here where it's not allowing it to bend. So just because I want this to be a smooth 90, I don't want it to be kind of like kinked at all. Um, I'm trying to get the outsides of the bend as well. Because the inside, I mean, is really, really flexible right now. Um, ideally, a, a good trick to do is to have something like a roll of wire or anything that is a six inch diameter. Um, this is, well, I guess it would be a five inch diameter. This is half inch pipe. So if you wanted to keep the same radius as a factory 90 is gonna have, um, it's gonna be the same thing as EMT or pretty close to it. All right, so to me, I think that's good enough. You actually know, you can see it's kind of kinked right here. It's not smooth like the rest of this stuff, so I need to keep heating it a little bit. What happens when you're, uh, when you're heating, if you just try to force this 90, it actually squishes the pipe. So the outsides flare out and the insides squish in. And you don't want that because it's gonna make trying to pull wire through it and get a fish tape through it really, really difficult. All right, so I'm gonna call that good. I'm gonna take a little bit of water and pour some water on it. The reason I do that is that instantaneously locks it in shape. You super cool it, you cool it very, very quickly. Um, so that's your 90. Now it's not the prettiest 90, like yeah, there is a little bit of a dip in here, but I could still get a fish tape through that. Um, and you can notice that it's not an even radius like this guy is. You know, like that, that's the same radius pretty much the whole way. This has got like a little bit of a straight, straight, straight. But when you're doing this, most of the time you're gonna be doing this underground and nobody's even gonna see it. You just wanna try to get the best you can to be able to get conduit through it. Now, if I'm on a job and I'm doing this and everything's gonna be visible, first off, I'm not gonna be doing this unless I absolutely have no other choice. I'm probably gonna be using factory 90 so everything looks beautiful, everything looks the same. Cause it's kind of hard to bend several of these and get them to look identical unless you spend a lot of time doing it and you're wasting money if you're doing that if you're spending all of that time again this is something you just do in a pinch um, but that's a 90 so uh, the next thing that i'm going to talk about let me turn this guy off it has to sit and cool for a minute next thing i want to talk about is uh, doing a box offset All right, so any of you that watched my last pipe bending video about EMT, you know what a box offset is. It's basically when you have a box and you have a piece of pipe coming in, 
get closer. All right, so anytime you have a box, the majority of the time, boxes are gonna have a little bit of a lip here that you have to overcome. So if you put pipe straight up to it, that's not gonna line up with the hole. So you have to bend a small little offset to make that even. You could just cheat, put a standoff strap here and make everything standoff strap so your entire pipe kind of stands off the wall a little bit. That's fine as well. Um, some people call them pipe hangers. Some people call them paint hangers. But you know what I'm talking about. It's a little clip that the pipe sits in. Um, but if some people will actually be lazy, and I personally think it's just hack work, to, to bring this up and stick it in there and then just put a strap on it, put a one hole strap on it with that gap in there. And it just looks like shit. That's just my opinion. So what I like to do is with every box that I go into, I'm gonna do a box offset. So box offsets are a little bit different in how you heat them. All right, so box offsets are gonna be a little bit different. Instead of me bending an entire radius, I'm gonna focus on one bend at a time. So I'm gonna heat kind of a specific uh, zone do that bend, cool it, and then I'm going to go back and do another one and do the same exact thing. So, uh, as you know, with EMT offsets, with box offsets, you're not really going to bend this a whole lot. You're just bending it a little bit at both of the offsets. Again, I don't want to focus too much in one area for too long, or else it's going to start burning that pipe. And as I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm pushing it on it to just see when it's gonna become flexible enough for me to bend my offset, kind of test it. All right, so right there, that's probably good. That's about a 10 degree bend. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water on that. All right, now that thing is locked in place. So now what I would do with, I would put my pipe bender on this side and I would bend this up. Ew. So make sure it's dry. I'm not just wasting my time. So I'm gonna come back a couple of inches, not too far. If you go too far, you'll have too big of an offset. So now I'm gonna start heating this area. I can start seeing that it's discoloring. And that happens when you're doing this because you're focusing on one area. So like right here, it's getting a little yellow. That means it's getting a little too hot. So you can always just back up away from the heat source a little bit so that you're not burning it. But that's pretty much a box offset right there. So um, once I get that next to my box, There you go. That's your box offset. Um, it's a little bit flexible, so you know if you don't nail it perfectly, it's got a little bit of give into it. Um, but that's what you're looking for. So now you could strap this against the wall like you should. It'll look good, and it'll naturally sit inside of that box. All right. So that was a box offset. The last thing we've got to do is just a regular offset. Okay, so for a normal offset, you're gonna treat this half inch PVC just like you're gonna do with uh, EMT. There's, you're gonna still use the same multiplier, but you're not using a bender to bend everything. You're, you're using it all by hand, but you still need to do the math if you wanna have a perfect offset with PVC. So let's say my first bend, I'm just gonna start at six inches. Gonna mark it, and let's say that we wanna have a four inch offset. So with, uh, with a 30 degree bend, which I'm gonna kind of approximate a 30 degree bend. I know 45, like this is 90 and 45 is half of that. So I'm gonna come in, you know, I'm probably gonna do my bend right about there. And again, it's just a guess because you're doing this all by hand. So I'm gonna to try to do about a 30 degree offset on both of these bends. And with a 30 degree offset, you know that you gotta do a 2X multiplier on the total distance between your, your marks on your offset. So if this is my first offset, and I'm trying to do 30 degrees, let's say we have a four inch object, so that would be four inches, you have to double it, you have to do a two X multiplier. So I'm gonna mark eight inches, and those are where my two bends are gonna be. Now, 
Again, this is probably not gonna be exact, exact, because I'm just doing it by hand. I'm taking some guesses on the angles, but the cool thing about this PVC is you can just kind of keep heating it to make sure that you can adjust your, your angles and get whatever that is, the four inches that we're trying to clear. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I just did with the box offset. Um, I'm gonna try to heat not too close to the pipe, so I burn it. Again, this is at 1500 watts. This thing's on pretty close to high right now, so it, it will burn very quickly. And notice I'm kind of spinning it faster too, because I'm going down lower. I'm trying to do this kind of quickly, so I don't want to let it sit in one place too long. So I'm actually spinning it faster than I normally would. So now I can see that it's giving. You can see it's starting to curve naturally. I'm gonna go a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left, just to give it a little bit more pliability. I keep saying that word, hoping that it's right. <laughs> a little bit more flexibility, because um, I don't want it to kink. And since we're doing a larger offset, we kind of need a little bit more uh, bend in this. All right, I'm gonna call that good. So, oops. So if we say 45 is probably right about there. So I'm gonna go right there for 30. I'm about to get wet. All right, then my next offset, I'm gonna do the same thing. Attack of the water. And normally when you're doing this, you're not gonna be doing it in a garage. So you're not gonna be fighting puddles of water. Just mud. This is something I should have done outside, but my yard is embarrassingly long. Like seriously, I might've cut my uh, grass one time this year. So uh, I'm not gonna show y'all. <laughs> so we're doing it in the garage. Secret time. I'll Secret tell you later. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> All right, that's starting to give. Now really, it doesn't matter too much what your angle is on this one. You're trying to make this part of the pipe and this part of the pipe down here parallel with each other. So when you look at that side to side, you want them to be parallel. Um, so I don't care so much about the angle. What I do care about is my height. So we said we're trying to hit four inches. Four inches is right there. Pour some water. Pour some water on me. Um, that's still, yep, that's four inches. It's just not uh, cooling as quick as I would like it to. There we go, rock solid. So that's how you would do a, uh, a regular offset the exact same way as you would uh, with EMT. Um, so again, you know, you can do kicks too. Same thing, you just heat one area and then kick the pipe up. Um, but that's all pretty much the same bends that we just did in the last uh, Electrician U video. So let me know if you guys have any questions. If you do things different ways, I've had people ask, well, can't you just use a bender, you know, heat everything up and then stick it in a bender? Um, I've seen people do that before. It doesn't usually work out very well because your bender is putting a lot of weight on the pipe, so you can tend to kick it. Again, there's a lot of different ways to skin this cat. Um, I'd actually like to see what y'all do if you guys do things different. Some people swear by torches, like that's all they want to use. Um, but uh, any tips and tricks that you older guys or you more experienced guys have, please leave down in the comments. Uh, if you have any questions for me, uh, get at me. But thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your attention greatly, and I will see you in the next episode. I am looking up the definition. Define pliable. Easy, bent, flexible. Yeah. Wrong.